Hey guys, it's Renee. So here's the deal for this DIY. So when I take a shower, I usually leave all my accessories or just, um, you know, necklaces or just earrings and stuff like that I'm wearing in the bedroom. I don't take the time to just store them back in the place. But I do have an issue with this one because this happened all the time. And this actually was a legit uh, reaction that actually happened. And I decided to place them on top of my towel, face towel that is. And then I just go to take a shower. But the issue comes when I am coming out of the shower and I need to dry my face because I don't have a space or another place where I can, you know, place them. My bedroom is pretty tiny and doesn't have a like storage. I usually end up losing pieces because of these issues. So this is why I made this plate out of polymer clay, this um, jewelry plate, so I can store my jewelry when I'm in there, like taking showers and stuff like that. And this is pretty much how the whole thing looks at by the end of like a couple of days or just three days. And what I do is just empty the plate and just um, put pieces back on where I store them. This is what I've been doing up so far and it's been wonderful. That was a huge intro, so let's go ahead and get started. This is me saying hi to you and these are all the materials that we're going to be using. Polymer clay. The color I'm using is vanilla. This brand is Sculpid Tree. Then I'm using this... Um, mason jar this is really old uh, lid that belonged to mason jar and that is my mason jar broke and that's why i just work with the lid itself parchment paper or you can use wax paper as well then some paint this is just a really cute minty color that i like it's from a local brand but you know just any kind of minty green that you find then i'm just going to be using this gorgeous copper color it's by liquid leaf and the name of it is Florentine Gold, and I just love it. It's not acrylic paint, it's another kind of paint. It works differently, but this is the one that I used, and I got it at um, Michael's. Okay, I got this idea from the internet, and they, the original idea was made with some sponge. I didn't have any sponges, I just wanted to work with what I have, and what I had is some filling, and this is what I'm using right here. You can find fillings on, you know, any craft stores. I used a makeup sponge, but you can use a brush as well. You're going to find out why once we get started. Then my epoxy glue, then some pliers, some scissors, and this piece of cutter that I only use for polymer clay and crafts. Then my finish, I'm using satin finish for this one, and I got this at Home Depot. Another item that I forgot to actually place on my basket is a, a plastic cookie cutter, and I use that to make the yellow shape on my plate. So without further ado, this is pretty much it. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, and let's go ahead and get started. So to start off, I'm just going to roll my polymer clay, and I did use my clay conditioning machine for this to flatten my piece but you can use a roller as well that's why I didn't add them in the list of materials needed I'm just going to start working over a piece of wax paper I'm just going to take my cookie cutter and I'm just going to kind of push my cookie cutter so it kind of forms this oval shaped cookie cutter if you have one to begin with just use that one instead of the round one and once that's done, I'm just going to remove my piece from my wax paper. And I'm just going to work on the edges just to re, you know, uh, smooth them a bit. And remember guys, when I told you at the beginning that we're going to use this uh, mason jar lid. You can use whatever is going to help you with the shape. But there was nothing around the house that could help me better than this. So that's why I chose this one. I'm going to place my polymer clay with my wax paper still in there. And I'm just going to kind of push it. So when it bakes, it's not going to bake all flat. It's going to bake with an angle, if that makes any sense. Kind of forming a plate. That's what I'm trying to say. So just, you know, push it as much as you want to have that curve on the bottom in there. And once you're done, you're ready to bake. But before we bake it, we're going to be working on this kind of uh, holder. And we're going to be using a piece of polymer clay flatten it using my clay conditioning machine again with my pizza cutter which you can use an exacto knife as well if you don't have this I'm just going to cut a strap in there and I'm going to kind of make a ring to go on the bottom part as I said before of my plate so once these two are baked I'm just going to glue them you can do glue them before with something like TLS or whatever but I just wanted to wait so my brain would be flat once baked. 
I was going to make another one and pretend that this didn't happen. But then again, I just want to, to share my experiences and maybe they can help you when you're working with this kind of things. So my piece baked over baked a bit in there. Nothing happened. My house didn't smell like anything crazy or just anything weird, but it just burned a bit. I'm assuming it's because I placed it on the middle part of my oven and with the mason jar, which is pretty much metal. But yeah, I'm just going to work with it. I'm just going to roll with it. Nothing happens. But just so you know, this can happen. And I honestly couldn't think of anything else I could use instead of like the mason jar lid to have this shape. But anyways, I'm just going to glue my two pieces together. I'm just going to mark with a pen where I want my kind of ring to be on the bottom part in there. And once that's marked, I'm just going to take my epoxy glue and pretty much glue it and just push it until everything is glued. Okay, once my pieces are glued and dry and ready for me to move to the next step, I'm going to paint them. And I forgot to mention that I'm going to be using a painting brush for this, a small one, and my paint. And I'm just going to give most likely three coats. And I'm just going to wait for the whole thing to dry before I move on to the next step which is kind of like the fun part of this whole project. I'm just going to take my sponge, I'm just going to open my paint, I'm just going to submerge my sponge on my lid of my paint, and then I'm just going to pretty much drag or just make splashes of paint, make it as busy or just as simple and minimalistic as you want to go. And then I'm just going to take my sponge, my makeup sponge, and I'm just going to cut a small piece in there. The reason I'm working with a makeup sponge rather than a brush to paint this particular goal is because this one is not water-based. It kind of works differently. I link to a blog that is kind of explaining a bit more how this particular paint goes. And I'm just going to fill all my bottom part in there. I decided to work with my bottom part first and then go to the top part once my bottom part is dry. Splashing as often as I wanted to. And it, again, it depends on your personal preference, your personal taste. Color combination here is pretty much limited to your own liking. Pretty much depends on yourself. Once my paint is dried, and I'm just going to secure my project with my satin finish, giving this a couple of coats, working outside over a piece of plastic. And make sure you wear gloves just to protect your, your hands. So I just want to share this idea. I hope you find it helpful. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more stuff and share this one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye guys.